Hello and welcome in today's exciting episode. I am going to be making some vintage dresses, well, vintage inspired. It's perfect, 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 perfect. Perfect jacket. So I was putting the lining in all of these dresses over here, and this one here, it's um, I just remember I made it in December last year, right at the end of December. And it's f um, three sections of fabric in the in the skirt, all pleated down. And um, yeah, and I just remember thinking when I made it, well, next, the next one I should do should have um, like the same but longer and not the sleeves. And then it would look really, really vintage. So, um, yeah, what I love about this one is the way all the tulips are exactly even. It took me forever to cut the panels just right. But, um, and yeah, so from the side and yeah, from all around, perhaps more than just from the f absolute front, it, um, sorry, the mannequin went a bit wonky here, but yeah, it it just has a really really vintage feel to it so I just um yeah I just remember thinking if I could make it like this but the skirt longer and sleeveless or just little cap sleeve then it would look so completely vintage and I meant to do it but I never did. Now before we move on to the dresses I made I just have to explain that first bit of footage I had the vintage petticoat on the mannequin and it's too short to fit over it so yeah I just had to show you the reveal of it sticking out the bottom anyway I now have the vintage petticoat under this one which I just made recently and um it is darling it is so completely gorgeous and here it is without the petticoat it looks completely different but also absolutely adorable. I think it's just a combination of me absolutely loving this fabric and loving this vintage silhouette. So yeah, it's it's just so pretty. It's a pullover dress, so it has no zip and you just, it is a bit baggy on the top, but it wasn't, um, this vintage Vogue one has a zip and it's fitted, but um, yeah, I just wanted some pullover dresses that, you know, would be nice but that you could also eat loads of food <laughs> if you're going to a party so then I used up I had four yards of this holly fab Christmas holly fabric and yeah there was just this tiny bit of fabric left so I made these little little um puff sleeves and they are so darling I just love this dress so much it's so pretty it's even better because it's a little starchy and um yeah, it's just, it's a little thicker than your average cotton and oh, it just holds the puff of the sleeves so well and it's, I don't know, I just, I was delighted by it. I just love it and I love that one too. So yeah, for me, these are the two, my two favourite ones, but I went on and I made two other dresses. So um, yeah, I suppose I should stop taking footage of this and show you, oh, because the green one the, with the um, wild roses on it, this one here, I was the first one I've ever made using the burrito method. So you don't have to hand stitch anything when you do a lined sleeveless um, bodice, which is very cool. It just takes so much less time because I've been doing it by um, just, you know, sewing the last bit by hand just because I learned to sew when I was a little kid and no one really taught me. And um, yeah, so I pronounce things the way a little child would. <laughs> and I use methods, like some of the methods I use, like the way I set sleeves, other people just cannot do it. But when you're a kid you're just like well I don't know what to do so you just do something if it's incredibly easy or incredibly difficult you just sort of muddle through and try and do it anyway so um then I decided because I was going through my March 9 uh, March plans and I remembered that I had this vintage simplicity dress to make so um I thought, well, instead of making the actual one, I'll do a simplified version and I'll just do one of these dresses again, but have a 
plain pa uh, flannel in the front and just the pleating on the sides with lots of pleating on the back. So that is what it is. So I got this fabric I have like three yards three and a half yards and um I, so with the top I cut out the um I just laid it out and I cut out the um front of the bodice and the back of the bodice so you sort of fold it in half and then you fold it in half a different way so I cut this the front bodice here on the fold and then over there I cut the back bodice on the fold you can do this for um probably most small and medium sizes but large you might have to um buy more fabric but yeah so I cut them out and then I got a plain coral for the lining so basically the same color without the white lines and then with the remains of the fabric I just tore off the other end so they were all straight and then I divided it into three so um like the tulip dress but it's slightly longer which is what I wanted and so these are my three lengths and um yeah so now I just had to sew these three together so that they were one big loop and that could be my skirt and then I would pleat it down. So then I put in some, sewed in some pleats and um, yeah, I think I sewed in about 16, 18, something like that. And for some reason I randomly forgot that to leave the front without a pleat. So, and I was too lazy to take it out again because I you know stitched it then gone back so um yeah and th this is the back so it's three panels so with one of the panels I pleated it all down into the back pleats because in the pattern it's got all these pleats in the back and um yeah so that bit is really good and this is the front it's got a um, box pleat then two knife pleats behind it so it's kind of like double pleat so there's um yeah just some fabric in the front and then there's flat and then there's some other pleating at the sides so um yeah it's an interesting choice <laughs> but I decided to go with it so now that the um yeah I'm yeah I was sort of having doubts but I was like uh you know it worst comes to worse I'll just make something else as well which I do and um yeah so I mean, it's it's kind of complicated. You can see there's all the pleats at the back centre and then a few at the front and then there's just... I sort of filled out the sides accordingly. So um, now that that was ready to be sewn to the bodice, it was time to actually make the bodice using the burrito method. So um, it's kind of like that kid's song, heads, shoulders, knees and toes. You sort of start at the top and then work your way down. So the first thing you do is the shoulders. You sew them together, um, the outer bodice and the lining. You just do the shoulders, not the sides, not anything else, just the shoulders. And then the next thing down is the neckline. So you lay out the li lining, then you lay the outer bodice on top of it, right sides together, I just had to go and have a coughing fit. I'm better now. So then you lay them together, then you pin them, and then you stitch that around just with your normal seam allowance. And once you've done that, then you clip the curves. And yeah, I think I've done one side at this point and not the other. So then I go and do the other side because that's fascinating. And then, um, yeah, and then the next thing is to so that's done now you have to turn it out now don't forget this step because I did and I was so confused so yeah so if I'm sound like I'm over explaining it I'm over explaining it to myself not to you so then you turn it out so it's the correct way and then the next thing you do oh, and then of course you're supposed to press it at this point but I'm very lazy and I do not like to iron so I won't be doing that so then the next step is to um you have to do the side seams and this is really confusing you have to um, sort of just to decide on a side and then you have to flip the lining under the whole thing and um, and then you have to roll the, the rest of it 
it down and then you have to put the so here you go I've flipped the lining down so it's the bottom most thing and then I've rolled everything in into the middle and then I've brought over the outer bodice so um, yeah I'm sure there are other people who explain it better but yeah and you pin the rolled bit just so that it doesn't get in the way and once it's all out of the way then you pin your sew line for the armhole and um, just sort of poke and check. I sort of just tap it with my fingers but however you check just so you know that there's nothing there and then you sew your seam allowance and then you clip the curves and um, yeah underneath there I've still got the pins so um, yeah you have to be very careful of this is me showing you how I clip the curves and I only did half of it then I stopped filming then I cut the other uh, clip the other half so I did clip it all rest assured anyway so next thing is to remember to take out those pins because you're just going to pull all this through and those pins have to be out so remember how many you put in and take them out and um, it's easier if the pin head is on the outer side not towards the center obviously and then you very carefully just pull everything through and then it turns out like this is a um, you sort of pull everything through and it brings it it sort of pulls it into the right shape and you end up with an armhole it's like magic but a lot more complicated and then um then you have to go and do the whole thing again because you've got to do the other side so you take the lining from the other side underneath the whole thing and face it so that it's on the surface and then you bunch roll up everything else into the little space and then you put the blanket of your other side over it and then you pin them into place. You pin the middle first, obviously, so that the seams, um, seam lines match up. And then you do one half and then you do the other half and just, yeah, make sure it's nice and, yeah, just take your time because it's got to be right. <laughs> Otherwise, it would be so complex because it's complicated to undo. Anyway, and then you machine sew it and um, then you clip the curves or clip the whole way around. And again, you just make sure you take those pins out. I just put one on each side. But if you're using a thicker fabric or a bulkier fabric or whatever, or it's a more complicated make, then obviously you're going to need a couple of pins It just remember how many you used and take them all out and then once they're all out pull it through because if you leave a pin in I'm pretty sure you'd wreck something so now they're both done and again you're supposed to press it but I think I'll just miss that step again <laughs> and um so the next thing is to do the sides so the left side and then the right side so and because this is a pullover dress I don't um, have to worry about zips or anything any other closures it's just um, straight sewing them up so again you just do because half of it is outer fabric and half of it is lining so um, just make sure that middle seam the underarm seam lines up and then pin everything else and then the next then the bodice was done so I pinned it into the skirt and then it was time to sew these two so the machine sew them together which um yeah it wasn't too shabby there were, it was a little bit bumpy in parts but yeah so I machine sewed it and then I did it again and then the lining um I just sewn up the hem of the lining so then you just um pin the lining over the top of the skirts to hide all the raw edges and encase them and then you hand stitch that and once that is done it ta-da so there's hardly any hand sewing in this dress and of course you have to do the hem but I haven't done that yet shh and here it is isn't it adorable you can sort of see by the way it sits that it's still a little bit long and it does need to be hemmed it's going to have a double turn hem and it's going to be nice and heavy and um 
sort of make the dress sit out nicer. So I think I did an okay job with this one. But as I said, I kind of really like the the front blank, um, you know, pleatless section in the other simplicity pattern. So I really love the back of this one. I think that sort of um, just fan of pleats at the back looks really, really good. And I'm actually thinking about doing another dress where it's got a whole fan of pleats in the front, a whole fan of pleats in the back, and then looser pleats, sort of less pleats at the sides. I think that would look really pretty. So, um, but yeah, this is the problem. Whenever I make a beautiful dress, I'm like, oh, I could make this. I could make this. So this is what it looks like without the um, petticoat underneath, that 1950s net petticoat underneath. And I think it looks really pretty. I think that's a good test of a dress. I, um, I thought this would look good, but it doesn't. It looks horrible from far away. From up close, they look, they've um, got, I think it's the hot pink. It it looks great with the hot pink, but from far away, they look terrible together. So then, um, yeah, I was like, okay, I don't think this is it. I think I have to do another one because see the flat panel where there's no pleating on the front. I really love that about that one. And I've been dying to use this fabric. It's, do you remember a few years ago, Dior did this green and uh, there's just some greens. Green is my favorite color. And there are just some greens like grass green or anything that's really, really like you'd see in nature and a plant is really thriving. Those are the greens that I love. So yeah, I made this one and I sort of overcompensated. I feel like the pleatless section in the front is too big. It's sort of like a good third to a half of the front. And again, I think it looks better from the side in the back than it does absolutely front on. And um, that's the problem with mannequins. When you're when it's on a person, they look so much better. And I love the way the pleats fall here. They're sort of, yeah, I think it's very beautiful. But um, yeah, I think when a plain dress is plain, like without a print, plain dresses on a mannequin, it can be a little unforgiving. But in general, I do like the pleats. And then I try to dress it up with different ribbons Oh, oh, no, this is me turning around to the front again and I turn the ribbon, push the ribbon just to the side a little so you can see what the flat front looks like. I mean, it's not terrible, but, oh, and I haven't cut the skirt down yet either. So it's got like an extra 10 inches on the bottom and it's really weighing it down. So I think that is part of the problem, with, problem as well. So um, this is it with a daytime summary sort of um sash on it and it's cute it is cute but it's not what I was going for this is more what I was going for and um yeah I like this I would probably wear it like this it's a, it makes it seem a, give it sort of 70s vibes rather than 50s or 60s but I don't, I don't mind that and this is it with the coat on I just think this green with navy blue just oh gorgeous combination absolutely beautiful combination but it does obscure the dress somewhat so um yeah <laughs> I was like this isn't helping <laughs> oh and I have to tell you the lining is a slightly duller green so this the outside is this gorgeously vibrant green and then the inside I just thought it was so cute it's like you know those cartoon frogs that are really green and then they've just got this pale stomach Anyway, so I feel like a bit of a failure because the first two dresses I made even before I started this video, uh, they'd already been made and they're my favourite ones. I mean, I do love this one, don't get me wrong, but I just feel like the other two are better and ones that I wear more, whereas this one, I mean, if you sort of dress it up with the right jewellery, it will be fabulous. Like, it would look gorgeous with gold and, um, ooh, I have a gold sequin jacket. That would look fabulous. And I was thinking for the hem of this green one, I might do one of those balloon hems because it's actually quite long. So if I added like just a few more inches of fabric and then carried it up to the bodice on the inside, I might do it that way. Then it, yeah, it'll be like that balloon effect. And um, 
yeah, I might do that. That'd be interesting. Because I feel like I haven't quite got it. Whatever I was searching for with this video, I'm not quite there yet. Also, I think I really need to iron these things. Damn it. Okay, I'll go do that. Spoiler alert, I didn't get the iron out. Yeah, not very shocking, is it? I got some embroidery on clay's fabric out and I have had this for a while now and it is just the most adorable fabric in the world. And I just wanted to make a really pretty dress out of it, like unapologetically, absolutely adorable. And yeah, I think this is it. So it's really, really see-through. Obviously, it's got holes in it, but it's also very, very thin as well and um, to allow for all the embroidery. So um, I had to use another layer and I did think about using, because um, I had a lot of orange, because I needed a lot of fabric. But then um, doing this one with the frog, it reminded me of um, when I was a kid. And I can't find any photos of them, but basically it was a petite four and then it had a blob of pink cream on top and then it was coated with green icing and then they cut a mouth out of it and put two little eyes on it. So it looked like a green frog with pink throat and um, that's the opposite. So yeah, that's why I used the green lining on the pink and um, fascinating, I'm sure. Anyway, here it is with the um, petticoat under 1950s net petticoat underneath and it is adorable it was quite a handful to do all this pleating it was um it's at least four yards wide because um and it was really difficult as well because I had to cut three lengths of um the pink and four lengths of the green because the green was not as wide and then I had to sew them together and work out ways that the seams weren't too obvious. And then I had to pleat it down. And um, yeah, so I did half the pleats, then went back and did the other half of the pleats over the top. So it's really quite full and um, also, as a result, bulky. But I feel like you can't see how bulky it is. So that's always good if it sort of looks effortless, but I still think this one is cute. I think what I love about this one is that the red bits of holly look like ladybugs and um, yeah, I just think that's adorable. Yeah, so I think the back three are still probably my favourite, the one I just made and the two, the holly one and the green one hanging on the rack there because they are just adorable. So now I need to be invited to like a dozen um, garden parties in spring and summer only joking. <laughs> I um, will just wear them to the supermarket or something. But um, yeah, I'm really happy with this dress. So happy. I still have to finish. The, well, actually, I pretty much have to hem all of them. But I think with the green one, I will do that um, trick where you do the balloon skirt. So you just attach another bit of fabric and then bring it up and it turns into the lining of the skirt. So I think I'll try that because I've never actually done that before. I did have a balloon skirt when I was a kid, so I understand how it works. But yeah, I've never actually done it before, I don't think. Maybe it's a costume for a stage show. Anyway, oh, this is what it looks like without a sash because I know some of you want to know what it looks like. I, yeah, you can happily wear it like that, but it does look way cuter with the sash and the um, vintage petticoat underneath. And that is it, folks. Um, I don't think I was entirely successful in making my own version of this dress. I'll get to it eventually, but I really just felt like making pullover vintage dresses this at this time. So, And I'm so glad I made this dress. I was really worried that it wouldn't look as adorable as I wanted it to. It does look a little white because the green sort of counters the pink. But um, I don't care. I love it. I think it's adorable and it's so swishy and pretty and it's so cute. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and I hope you've been inspired to make your own vintage style dresses.